I would like to greet all of you uh, joining this uh, evening online service. It's my prayer that uh, the Lord will give uh, clarity to the to the word, and that as we study this word together, that um, we'll find the comfort and the encouragement that we need uh, from it. That the word of God would uh, accomplish that for which God has sent it. The text I want to look at this evening is taken from uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. It is part of the Apostle Paul's prayer for the Colossians. And this prayer runs from verse 9 through to verse 12. And my intention is simply to look at one verse, verse 9. And uh, God willing, we can come back to it later on and um, look at the other verses. But I'll read from verse 9 to verse 12. And I'm reading from the authorized version of the Bible. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, and to all patience and long, long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Believers are confronted with a lot of empty and enticing spiritual alternatives. We have this tension between what is right and what is wrong. And sometimes the choice is very subtle because it is a choice between what is lawful and what is expedient. A choice between what we want and what we really need. A choice between what we know and what we do. And um, in some places, when we turn up for worship, we are being offered this kind of instant gratification. We are being offered a how-to type of Christianity. We are being offered um, a Christianity that requires certain steps that we have to follow, uh, but with no substance and uh, no defenses against error. A brand of Christianity that um, um, focuses on feelings, on experiences, uh, without attention to doctrine. And with this type of Christianity, the lazy man feels very comfortable because the lazy man prefers to be agnostic. The lazy man prefers to be ignorant. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about doctrine. 
doctrine is found dry, it, he finds it uh, boring, he doesn't want anything that has a cutting edge, um, he, he, he wants uh, feelings and uh, um, he, he wants uh, experiences and, um, and then we end up with a, a church that looks exactly like the world. Uh, the other extreme rejects anything to do with human emotion. Um, and and um, uh, the sadder you seem to be, even the better. Uh, and uh, and uh, we end up with a kind of a dead orthodoxy that is based on traditions. It has no, no, no impact and um, there is no authority. Yeah, that we get from this kind of uh, traditional way of thinking and doing doing things, and and both these are illusions that that are properly packaged as uh, the reality yeah, we we cannot do without, and uh, we need to be able to to know and to reject both. This is the way God has ordered things, that we live in this kind of tension. And it is for us to have the discernment, it is for us to have the maturity to know exactly what we need to do. Galatians 4 verse 19, Paul says, My little children of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. And uh, in Colossians, Paul says that in such an environment, you need the full knowledge of the will of God in all spiritual wisdom and all spiritual understanding. That in such an environment, the believer needs to establish the supremacy of Christ in all claims. His prayer for the Colossians is very foundational. This prayer is very brief in its scope, but this prayer is extravagant. It is very rich in its content, and it is very wise in its design. Uh, the apostle is asking for the believer to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God in all spiritual wisdom and all spiritual understanding. What the Apostle Paul is asking is this, that in accordance with God's calling on the believer's life and the capacity he has given to each, the believer should be filled with the knowledge of the will of God in all spiritual wisdom and all spiritual understanding. This is how someone has amplified this Greek text. It reads like this. On account of the hope that is laid up for you, the inheritance that is ours because we are in Christ. On account of that, Timothy, and I, from the day we heard about the fact that you have trusted in Christ, we do not permit ourselves to cease praying for you, desiring that you may be liberally supplied with the precise, correct, and the thorough knowledge of God's will, his intent and purpose 
in all spiritual wisdom in the broad sense and in all spiritual understanding in a more specific sense. Joining together in your minds the things which you have learned are learning and will learn about God. So I want to break this petition down. The first thing he is asking is for the believers to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. And then he distinguishes that knowledge. He says it is knowledge in all spiritual wisdom and all spiritual understanding. Now, when I read this uh, passage, the first thing that came to my mind was what we tend to think about the will of God. When we hear about the will of God, we quickly think of something very personal. We, we look at something like a decision that we need to, to make. And we want to know what God would have us do um, in that uh, particular situation. It could be something to do with a job. It could be something to do with uh, finding a life partner. It could be something to do with our finances. But in most cases, it is something very personal. It's like um, a, a roadmap to happiness. It's like uh, steps that we need to follow in order to succeed and in order for us to be happy. And these to, to seem to be um, our greatest concerns. But the Apostle Paul is not praying here for details uh, which are not revealed in the Word of God. He's praying that these Christians may have full knowledge of God's will as revealed in Christ. Uh, a good commentary on this passage is found in Ephesians chapter 1. When we are thinking about the will of God that the Apostle Paul is talking about here. So if you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, reading from verse 4. Uh, this is what uh, the Apostle Paul says. Verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without to blame before him in love. Verse 5 having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. The Apostle Paul says, this is the will of God. This is what God has done in Christ Jesus. He continues, verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. So God has made known to us the mystery of his will. So the will of God can be known 
and he has revealed it according to what we, we read here. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we sh should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. In fact, in Colossians chapter 1, that's the reason after that his prayer, the apostle Paul launches into the ex exaltation of Christ and in thanksgiving for God's redemptive work and purpose in Christ. He says, Colossians 1 from verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. This is the will of God. When the church is being disturbed, the believers are being presented all kind of um, um, uh, wrong teachings and um, um, uh, speculations, the apostle Paul prays that the believer may come to the full knowledge of the will of God. And this is the will of God. What God has purposed before time and what God has done in Christ Jesus. And that the knowledge of that will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding is what is going to help the believer to walk a life that pleases God, to be fruitful and to abound. The Lord says in John chapter 6, from verse 38, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And we can see that God's will is what he has done in Christ Jesus. Paul says this also in Galatians from chapter 
verse 3 of chapter 1 to verse 5. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The safest place for each one of us to be is in the center of God's will as revealed in Christ. We should never be satisfied with the mediocre. Our prayer, our desire should be to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. The will of God is what God has made available for the believer in his son. The will of God is God's full counsel as made known in Christ. It is every doctrine, every precept, every prophecy, every blessing, every experience, every promise. All these are found in this petition. All of God's purposes, God's plans, God's commands, all these belong to the will of God. God's dealings with man, that mystery of God's will revealed in Christ, that is the will of God. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians 3, from verse 1, he says, For this cause... I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to uh, given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. That is the will of God. That's what the apostle is praying for. It is uh, that God is renewing all things in Christ Jesus. It is our salvation and the grace of God in its fullness. That God has done away with our sin in his son, so that we can be, by being filled completely with the knowledge of this will, we may live a life that pleases God. Why do people want to focus on empty curiosities? Why do people want to focus on vain speculations? Why do people want to focus on products of uh, carnal minds? Be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Um, as I said earlier on, we are being offered all these kind of alternatives and uh, ways to do church. And um, we, we are made to believe that... Um, our Christian life is um, limited 
uh, because we do not uh, practice certain things. Uh, it looks as if um, when we meet together, we are missing out on the fun that others seem to be having. Uh, with all this, Malaya's the apostle shows that there is only one answer, full knowledge of the will of God. Full means that there should be no gaps in our knowledge of the will of God. And the idea of completeness up to the height of their capacity is given in the world, in the word field. So they are to, to, to be made complete uh, to the height of each believer's capacity to be filled. Their knowledge should pervade the believer's life. The, the knowledge should fill the believer to overflow. The believer should be awash with the knowledge of God's will. The believer should be overwhelmed with the knowledge of the will of God. Fulfillment is not to be found in manifestations. It is not to be found in observations. Uh, whatever else may be out there. The answer is that the believer should be grounded and steadfast in the knowledge of the will of God. For us to be grounded and to be steadfast in the knowledge of of the will of God. Um, the, the, the word of God is um, um, very um, clearly presented in scripture. That the, the, and that, that's what we need to be grounded and very steadfast um, in, in um, the knowledge of the will of God, as, as we can see from this petition. God is willing to fill the vessels of his choosing. And uh, because of that, uh, this should be our constant uh, prayer. Um, I want to take time now to draw your attention to how distinctive this petition is in its object. It's not asking for all sorts of things. It's a knowledge of God's will. Now, this knowledge is not in the abstract. Uh, this knowledge is not vain. It's not worthless knowledge. In fact, it's not praying for uh, knowledge of biblical doctrine. Just, you know, you, you, you can learn these things. Yeah, you can uh, learn Bible verses off by heart. But without a practical bearing, on our lives, these things are of, of no use because head knowledge simply uh, makes one, you know, uh, 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 proud. Now, two words are used in reference to, to knowledge. The first word which is used is... Um, the word from which we, we get our English word diagnosis. Uh, we, we've heard, we, we've, we've heard uh, words such as diagnosis, we've heard words such as uh, prognosis, yeah, we've heard words such as uh, Gnosticism. Now, diagnosis is uh, analytical knowledge. Prognosis is uh, foreknowledge. 
And this is not the knowledge that the Apostle Paul is talking about. There were people coming to this church who were emphasizing personal spiritual knowledge. These people are known as uh, Gnostics. They didn't want orthodox teaching, tradition, authority of the church. They rejected this. For them, the principal element of salvation was to have a direct knowledge of the supreme divinity in the form of um, mystical insights. Um, the concept of sin and the concept of repentance were of no use as far as they were concerned. All they wanted was illusion and uh, enlightenment. This was a speculative philosophical knowledge. And this type of knowledge was reserved for the spiritual elite. That's not what the apostle is praying for. He doesn't use that word. He uses a word that shows the advanced degree of the knowledge he wants the believer to have. It is different in nature. It is a deeper apprehension of God's truth. And the word he uses is epignosis. And he uses a superlative to refer to this knowledge. This knowledge is clear. This knowledge is correct. This knowledge is further. This knowledge is substantial. This knowledge is meaningful. Uh, this is the knowledge of the will of God in Christ. This knowledge is spiritual. This knowledge is experiential. This knowledge is practical. This is the type of knowledge which changes hearts. This is the knowledge which governs lives. That's why the apostle talks about walk in the very next verse. That knowing the will of God, the believer may do. Because we know the will of God, then we are able to walk in a way that pleases God. We are able to bear fruit and to abound. We are able to know God because of this knowledge. You may walk worthy of the Lord. This is what we need. This is all we need to glorify God. This is our salvation. This is our security. This is our satisfaction. This is the standard by which we, mu we must live. This is our banner, an overwhelming knowledge of the will of God. The foundation of Christian character and conduct is led in the knowledge of the will of God. Wherever we find error, it is because the believer is deficient in the knowledge of the will of God. The only way to correct error is to bring this knowledge. That's the only solution. Knowledge, profound knowledge 
of the will of God. What, what concerns us is not to know, uh, you know, the abstract truth, revelation, speculative thoughts. But we need to know the will of God. That is the knowledge of the will of God Paul is praying for in this text. Now he continues with the distinction in the next terms he uses to describe the knowledge. He says, in all wisdom and the spiritual understanding. Uh, spiritual is an emphatic position. The word spiritual should be applied to both wisdom and understanding. And it should read, in all spiritual wisdom and in all spiritual understanding. Now, as we can see here, this is an operation of God's Spirit in the lives of His people. This is not taught skill. This is not uh, an intellectual exercise. It is a gift. It is a blessing that comes from God. How, you can see how different this is from what these um, um, people were bringing to the church to disturb the church. And say, oh, you, you need this um, kind of knowledge, and so, which was simply speculation and 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 uh, and, and, and useless. Um, it was uh, simply head knowledge that was had no bearing, and no no impact, no influence upon um, someone's uh, someone's life. Paul is asking for a, an impartation from above of a thorough insight into the will of God as directing the practical life. The Holy Spirit's operation on our faculties, making the knowledge experiential. It's as if the Spirit is rewriting the moral law of God on our hearts and, um, and in making this law become supreme for us. Spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding bring the knowledge of the will of God into the sphere of the human faculties and practice. Because of what we know of the will of God, then our practice align with what we know of the will of God. We do not need to be told what to do. We know it from the heart. We do not need uh, to be told to be faithful to the work of God. We know it from the heart because we know the will of God as revealed in Christ because this knowledge pervades the whole of our being. Therefore, our action, our lives are in sync with what God records of us. In fact, it says he made us as his workmanship created for good work in Christ Jesus. And so God has made us in such a way that uh, we should be to the praise of his name, that we should conform to the image of Christ. And because of that, because we know the will of God in our heart, this then it is shown in all spiritual wisdom and all spiritual understanding. I look at these two terms um, and, and then I'll close. A spiritual wisdom. This is the application of God's will to life. 
This is the, the practical ability to regulate conduct in the light of what we know of the will of God. This is a transfer of knowing into doing. It is knowing what God's will means to our lives. It is testing the same way people do with precious metal. What honors God in light of what he has done for us in Christ. We know what God has done for us in Christ. And because of that, our lives are aligned to honor God and to make sure that what we do honors God in all spiritual wisdom, in skill in using this knowledge. It is to see the totality of the believer's life in the context of biblical perspective. Uh, we don't have a church life. And then we have a life outside. Um, what we do, uh, everything we do is done in diligence, uh, consideration of what the, the word of God teaches. Uh, th that's what leads us to this walk that pleases God. And that's what leads us to bearing fruit. Wisdom is um, showing the right usage or exercise of, of knowledge. It is the choice, not only of commendable ends, but of the best means to accomplish them. Wisdom is seen in acts. Wisdom is seen in practices. I, I can even say wisdom is quickness of spiritual in intellect. A readiness of apprehension of the things of God. It is dexterity in execution of, of what God requires of us. Uh, you, can, you can read uh, yeah, Exodus 31. Uh, we have the account there of uh, Bezaliel and uh, Oholiab. And uh, we read there that God had filled. Uh, Exodus 31 verse 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. This is the wisdom which is from above. Job 28, 28. Behold, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. The fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Uh, spiritual wisdom is subtlety. It is craft. It is a stratagem in the believer's walk. This is how Paul puts it. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 
you are walking in a world that is full of sin because you know you are filled with the knowledge of the will of God. You have the craft, you have the skill, you have the stratagem to walk in such a world without being soiled. You are among the believers. You are not there because you want to please someone. You are not there because you want to be seen. But you are there because you have a heart that loves God. A love, a heart that honors God. A heart that is a sound in the things of God, a heart that understands. Uh, spiritual wisdom has nothing to do with human cleverness. Um, but it has uh, everything to do with obedient reverence for God. It is a gift from heaven. James 1.5 If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. 1 Corinthians 1 from verse 22. For the Jews require sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks of foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Ultimately, this is God's wisdom personified. Christ in you the hope of glory that you might be filled with all the knowledge of the will of God in all spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding. But how do we please God if we do not know the Bible? How do we respond to stress if we do not know the Bible and have skills in using uh, it in response to our needs. Uh, so the apostle uses the second lofty expression in distinguishing this type of knowledge from mere speculation. And uh, what he says is um, in all spiritual understanding. To bring more clarity, I just want to, you to turn with me to Psalm 119, and I read a verse there, Psalm 119 and uh, verse 34. Uh, this is what it says. Psalm 119 and verse 34. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. The image that is presented in this passage 
is this. Spiritual understanding helps the believer to become like a watchman, like a guard, like a vigilant keeper of God's law. Like someone who stands cautiously against any trespass of God's law. This is watchfulness which flows from the understanding of God's law. It's as if the scripture, the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is teaching the believer the scriptures. He takes the believer through what the will of God is. The Holy Spirit removes the veil so that the believer can understand. Because otherwise, human mind will not be able to comprehend the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. So the Spirit of God has to remove that, that veil. He has to remove the scales from, from, from our eyes so that we can see, we can grasp. what the word says. We need this divine intervention so that we can realize, we can delight in the divine will. He helps us to fully grasp uh, the, the full impact of what uh, God has done for us in Christ. This is what spiritual uh, understanding is. The failure to enter into the fullness of what God has provided for us in Christ is the believer's predicament. And the only cure um, is the full assurance of understanding and acknowledgement of the mystery of God. Fuller, deeper knowledge of God's grace full assurance of faith, full assurance of understanding. Colossians 2, verse 2, uh, this is what it says, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And verse 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. First Corinthians 14 verse 20, Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. The Spirit of God removes the veil and we can grasp the things of God. This spiritual understanding has a consequence. The spiritual understanding brings about obedience. Spiritual understanding impacts behavior. Spiritual understanding enables walking. The believer does not become ritualistic. He does not focus on outward action. Uh, I remember attending a business meeting in a fellowship in, in, in Zambia and uh, the, 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 the elder there was uh, talking about giving. And and uh, he was not satisfied with um, the level of giving that members were 
you know, he was not happy with what the members uh, were contributing to the work. And, and he said, um, I know those who give and I know those who do not give. Now, the, the, the system was that they had these envelopes where members were putting their tithes and, um, and their free will offerings, and they were writing their names. They asked them to write their names on these envelopes. And and um, so when uh, the, the, the the leaders receive these envelopes, then they can keep a record of what each person is contributing, and they can know that James hasn't given a tithe for so long in the church, and so the elder was saying that you know I need to go and have a word with some of uh, these members. That's not this kind of understanding. That is ritualistic. That is um, outward uh, action. That is something done out of habit or, or coercion. That's not a response from a heart that loves God. Um, we can worship God with our lips. But at the same time, having our hearts very far. That's not what the, the apostle is praying for. It is the spiritual understanding, the grasping, the comprehension of the will of God in Christ Jesus. that changes behavior because I understand the word of God and I act because I understand the word of God. I truly understand what God um, is speaking to me. This is uh, Christian maturity. It is understanding the all surpassing value of Christ. It is making Christ preeminent in all claims upon our lives. And Paul says, talking of the Lord Jesus, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks that you are good to us. That your will has been revealed, the mystery which was hidden has been made clear in Christ Jesus. That even Gentiles should be partakers. Those who were far, a people without God, a people without hope, completely outside the commonwealth of Israel have now become the people of God, that you've removed every separation and you've made one new man. We thank you, Lord, that uh, all your promises in Christ Jesus are yes, and in him, amen. We thank you that, Lord, you you call us and you call us by name. And, and you say that uh, you know, we are yours. Help us, Lord, to 
to be filled with this knowledge of your purposes for our lives in Christ Jesus in a way such as this in all spiritual wisdom in all spiritual understanding that uh, we may be to the praise of your name because that is your will for us in Christ Jesus. It is in his name that we ask it. Amen.